Good afternoon, everyone. We will go directly to the point. We'll be now speaking on what we have called another step towards IPv6 only networks. This is a DNS IPv6 only server behind a NAT64 solution. This implies protocols, transition mechanisms, IPv6, NAC64, and the DNS solutions. And we're going to explore these concepts before Alejandro explains what the solution is about. Now, first of all, this is about uh, putting a DNS behind a NAT64. Let me remind you of the relevance of the DNS system in the Internet. This allows us to do the resolution or the change in the domain names or in host names to IP addresses, both in IPv4 and in IPv6. This is very important because as human beings, when we use and consume the internet, it's difficult to remember all the IP addresses. And with IPv6, there's a much more, much longer, many more. And we use names with a syntax representing a domain the name of a host within that domain. So this facilitates the use of the internet by the subscribers, by the users, and that's the relevance of this. Now, within this DNS system, we have different types of servers. There are several techniques, and one of these techniques is what we know as a recursive DNS server. This is a server that will be in charge, and considering the structure of the domain names, it will be in charge of receiving the requests from the clients, requests for a domain name, for a host name, the type of query, if this is a query of an IPv4 address, a quad A in IPv6, or DNS re record, or whatever, and also using a techniques and iteration technique as well as the syntax of this domain. So it goes to the root servers and produces and, and studies this until it reaches the IP address it needs. So having understood the relevance and recalling how the DNS system works, the second component of the solution that Alejandro will be explaining is the transition mechanism on NAT64. This is locating an IPv6 only DNS server behind a NAT64, and this transition mechanism is a mechanism that allows clients or servers in the IPv6 only space can establish communications with servers or with clients that are in the IPv4 space and that are only IPv4. You will recall that in the native scenario, IPv4 and IPv6 networks cannot communicate in a predetermined way. They need to have a system that carries out this translation because these are two different languages. I can have six with six and four with four, but from six to four, I need to have a translation architecture, which is the one offered by NAT64. This is based on translation of the IP packets, but most of all of the header translation. You will recall that the IPv6 header and IPv4 header structures are different. The IPv4 has many more fields and IPv6 has more bytes, but less fields. So processing is more efficient. So this header translation in a very summarized way, it takes into account the translation at IP level. In some cases, translation is done at port level because of the NAT that is involved. So the IPv6 device, which is to reach an IPv4 device through a NAT64, then in this case, the translation traduces the origin IP address and then to the IP destination IP address. It generates an IPv address containing IPv6 address 
by means of a translation syntax, which is what we call the algorithmic mapping. The important thing is that 6.4 is that works at IP level and does not modify the payload or the data of the packets. So I'll give the floor to Alejandro Acosta to explain the details of the solution. Vale, gracias, Jose. Thank you, Jose. So let us now continue with this topic. What is the current situation that we are experiencing here? So this is that the deployment of the IPv6 only networks is becoming more and more widespread in the world. This was taken from the IETF draft that this is referring to. So it just states that when one goes to the IPv6 only world, one has to face challenges and we have to pay attention to this. So this is a problem and this is the explanation that Jose showed us of this being a recursive DNS. Now, this is the problem on the left side. We have a recursive server. It's called an iterative resolver. And this is the one that we might be receiving through DHCP or through RA in the IPv6 world. Now, if that server on the left side is located in IPv6 only cloud, when it's going to do the recursiveness to reach the root servers and the TLD servers, the .com or the .nets and so on, if they encounter in the DNS tree that that part doesn't have IPv6, then this cannot be completed. This is a real example where the server reaches the root servers and then the .org servers and finally it cannot resolve the name which is IEEE.org. So as a result, we have to base ourselves on this draft. This is something that has been approved, but undoubtedly in the current world, most of the TNS servers that we deploy are going to be dual stack. Now, this might have some advantages that I will be referring to later on. So the solution will ultimately be this one. We have a DNS server on the left in a cloud, in an IPv6 only cloud, but we have that little box between the two clouds, between the IPv4 and IPv6 clouds. So this box does NAT64. NAT64 is an additional box that we have in the network. Today, the major vendors all do NAT64. There are open source solutions that also do this without any issues. And in fact, for the people who went on Monday to the course, the NAT64 box that we used was a Linux device that had been virtualized with a based on Jules that was developed by Nick Mexico with strong support from Mexico. And this was high level software that was produced. So ultimately the goal is to have NAT64 in front of a DNS server that has these gigs only. So the purpose is that the D recursive DNS server can then reach those authoritative name servers that are only IPv4. The advantage of all of this is nothing breaks, fortunately. Actually, Hugo Salvador's presentation, when he spoke about RAPC, he could also mention DNS64. DNSSEC breaks. As the translation only happens in layer three, we are now modifying at all the payload of the DNS response, and translation stays, and DNSSEC works just fine, and it all works uh, fine for our client, for our network. We might save even IPv4 addresses. Why? Because our DNS server is not assigning any IPv4 addresses. If it has in an IPv6 only network, doesn't need V4. And the advantages of having a 100% IPv6 only network, we can administer just one stack. Those of you who are here, who's a part of your network is IPv6 uh, IPv6 only, you have appreciated the 
benefits of managing one single stack, IP, only one family, uh, only one routing family, and everything that that brings along. Memory and CPU, even though well, computers today have a very good CPU and memory capacity, saving even if it's just a few bytes by not having to lift the stack, the IPv4 stack means savings at the end of the day. So that is all that we wanted to share with you today. If there are any questions, please go ahead. And we welcome your questions. Any questions for Alejandro and Jose? If there are questions, please come close to the mic. Or you can also use the Q&A chat on Zoom. There are no questions. Thank you to our speakers.